didn't see there. <laughs> so, today's story is about Vilgaforts. If you know anything about Vilgaforts, other than the Netflix show, you know he's a pretty bad dude, right? So, I'm going to talk about a little backstory about him first, and then we're going to get into condensing the whole books into one little story. Okay? So, also, if you don't know, there will be massive, massive spoilers for the books. And I guess the show, if they cover any of this. So let's start. As any great story, let's start at the beginning. And this beginning didn't start well. Vilkaforts was abandoned as an infant. His parents left him to die in the gutter and Lan Durex. He was later found and raised by druids. While he was staying with the druids, a mage visited them. Vilgefortz caught the eye of the mage, sensing his magical energy. At the time, Vilgefortz refused his offer. Later, he left the druids and traveled around the world. He served as a mercenary and later a spy. He himself recalled feeling ashamed for the things he's done, including robbing people and murdering. At the end of his journey, he was running to the other end of the world, trying to avoid the executioner's axe. Along the way, he had a brief romance with a woman before he left her. He joined the mages soon after. Let's jump to an important event, the Battle of Sodden Hill. Vilkaforts assumed command over the mages from the northern kingdoms. After the battle, he organized the truce between the northern kingdoms in the Nilfgaardian Empire. At that time, he was the leader of the chapter of Brotherhood of Sorcerers. He was not only incredibly ambitious and power-hungry, but also secretly in league with Amir von Emerus, the Emperor of Nilfgaard. This had begun many years before the wars, while Emir was still hiding under the alias of Duni. With Amir von Emerus, he had many past encounters with mages, but Vilgefortz was the only mage he trusted. Vilgefortz's thirst for unlimited power brought him to the conclusion that he needed Ciri's blood in order to claim her powers. If you don't already know this, Ciri is the descendant of Lara Doran, so she has elder blood. Using his intelligence, Vilgefortz aided Amir in taking the throne. In exchange, Emir promised him the north, once it was taken over. To help Emir, Vilgefortz created a giant teleporter that would take the ships sailing nearby and teleport them to the outskirts of Castle Stiga, his main base. One ship did indeed get taken, Pavetta's ship. She sensed that Emir was planning something, and she smuggled Ciri off board before setting sail. Let's fast travel to the year 1267, to the island of Thaneth. He was accompanied by Francesca Findabar, who was one of the main leaders of the Brotherhood of Sorcerers. She took a deal for Amir that, if she helped the Nilfgaardians take out the opposing side during one of their battles, he'd give her the title of queen and be allowed the, to rule over Dol Clothana, turning it into an elven state. She accepted the offer. During the Thaneth Ball, Garrett was first introduced to Vilgefortz. So this is a clipping from the book that pretty much gets Geralt's first impression of him. In the case of sorcerers, as Geralt knew, the term young covered any age up to and including a hundred years. Vilgefortz looked 35. He was tall and well built, wore a shirt jerkin of a knightly cut but without a coat of arms, naturally. He was also fiendishly handsome and made a great impression. Let's get back to the story. While conversing with Geralt during the party, Vilkefortz offered him to become a mage, but was denied. Vilkefortz then told him that he would need to take sides soon. Later on, Vilkefortz and other mages were accused of treason and put into Dimeridian shackles. However, due to the actions of Desiah de Vries that she considered fair and just, he broke free 
and a battle between the mages began. Vilgefortz followed Ciri to Tor Lara Tower. However, his path was blocked by Geralt, standing between him and Ciri. Vilgefortz materialized an iron staff. Geralt, believing Vilgefortz would be an easy opponent, began the fight. He was mistaken and was brutally beaten and almost killed by Vilgefortz. He only let Geralt live because he wanted to catch up to Ciri. Once he did catch up to Ciri at Tor Lara, she used the portal inside, but the tower blew up, resulting in disfiguring Vilgefortz's face and costing him his left eye. Afterwards, he retreated to his castle and continued his plan. Unable to contact Nilfgaard again, because he sent Emir a false theory so that he can keep the original for himself. His assistant, Rhys, partnered up with Leo Bonart and Stefan Skellen to find and capture Ciri. That whole venture will be for another video. Later, he managed to imprison Yennefer after she sailed into the teleporter Vilgefort set up in Skellige. Yennefer noticed that the exposure of Tor Lara caused grave injuries to Vilgefortz, scarring and burning half of his face and destroying one of his eyes, although he was in the process of magically regrowing a new one. He tortured her to retrieve the location of Geralt and Ciri. She refused to help, and so he imprisoned her with dimeridian cups in a cell. Ciri later appeared at Stiga Castle to save Yennefer but was captured and imprisoned by Vilgefortz. He told her that, like many others, he wanted to use her for her blood. But he didn't want to have a son with her, rather wanted to use the powers on himself, and Ciri wouldn't need to be alive. However, before Vilgefortz could continue his plans, he was alarmed that Geralt and his companions had arrived at the castle. Vilgefortz left his lab to assist Bonart and Skellen in the fight. The castle was now a battlefield. Soon, Vilgefortz encountered both Geralt and Yennefer, battling in a magical duel and almost killing Yennefer. Before he could deal the final blow, Regis intervenes, scratching Vilgefortz just under his left eye. In return, Vilgefortz rips the vampire apart with his bare hands and then burns his body, leaving him nothing but a puddle of blood. Geralt enters the fight against Vilgefortz, but unknown to him, Geralt uses an amulet that was given to him by Frangilla Vigo while he was in Tucson. Who's this? This is not Frangillo, okay? I don't know who this is. This isn't Frangilla Vigo at all. Ah, there we go. There she is. Back to the story. This amulet created an illusion of Geralt, and Vilgefortz took the fate, knocking the false Geralt to the ground. When he goes to deliver the death blow, he becomes perplexed that it goes right through him. He realizes too late, and when he turns to attack, Geralt slashes open his torso and then beheads him mid-sentence. Before dying, Vilgefortz madly screamed Geralt's name and it is left unclear whether he was about to curse Geralt or plead for mercy. After the battle, Yennefer mentions that she was only able to battle him for so long because his coordination was off due to his new eye still growing. So you're probably wondering why he was so powerful. Well, he learned magic from the druids, which they could conjure up a storm out of nothing. And then he also learned magic from the sorcerers, Putting those two together, it's pretty powerful, and you can combine different magics depending on the situation. Not to mention, he was also a mercenary, so he had that combat training, making him even more powerful. Pretty interesting stuff. So, that concludes the treacherous and evil tale of Vilgefortz. If there is another story you'd like for me to read, put it down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to make a new one for you. With that said, good luck on the path.